Hi, welcome back to ODE YouTube channel. My name is Paulo and today we are starting the opening and review of each ink on the Diamine Inkvent calendar for 2021, which is called the Red Edition. As I did on the Blue Edition for the 2019, I will make the review of each ink each day. So, today is the 1st of December, so we will open the window or door number 1. And so let's see what is behind. I did not see before, I don't know the which ink is here, and so we will try to open this and show you. So, here it is. First, I can see that the bottles are different because the, the previous ones were made of glass and this one is plastic. And I think it's, in a way, it makes more sense because it reminds us more about the um, diamine ink bottles. So, what we have here it says 12 milliliters. It is called Seize the Night, which is a fun name, and it is a standard ink. So, this one has no shimmer or no sheen, just a regular a standard ink, and it is the ink for the first day of this inkvent calendar. So, I will just take this out of the way and I will continue, I will open this and I will continue the review just in a moment. So, stay there. And now let's use this little Rhodia small notepad to make the swatch. And now, so I will I want just to put maybe three drops of ink on the paper and then pick up this large Victorinox knife. Let me take the ink away and just do something like this. Okay, this is kind of a, maybe a violet. Uh, be something between burgundy and violet. I think it's really a uh, wine color. So, now what I will do is I will let this one dry, then I will assess the real color of the ink, and then, based on that, I will choose which pens I'm going to ink with it for the proper review. So, I'll be right back. And here we are with this very shiny bottle. Hard to show you the, the label. One thing that I want to mention is that the 2021 Inkvent calendar is more expensive than the Inkvent calendar for 2019. And there are maybe one main difference that we want, we need to point out. One is that this bottle, this is the, for day one in 2020, in 2019, it was the blue peppermint. This ink was available in a seven milliliter little bottle made of glass in this case. This one, in 2021, it is made of uh, plastic, but it is a 12 milliliter. So you get five more milliliters for, for each ink, which is kind of nice, and that may explain the increased price of this one. So these are nice little plastic bottles. So this is how the ink comes. Let me show you the swatch now that is already dry. You have these... I'm not sure if 
all the, the color balance is perfect because making ink reviews is very very hard but um, this ink is kind of a brownish ink but with a little shade of purple or burgundy it's very hard for me to describe I want to show you other ink swatches that may somehow compare with this one. So, just to start, I want to get here maybe three. Okay, uh, I want to show you some differences here. First, this looks like a little bit on the purplish or the burgundy. The first comparison I want to make is with day 13 of the 2019 advent calendar and there was in that day a uh, mulled wine which was a burgundy ink and now you can really compare a burgundy ink here I'm not sure if it looks burgundy or if it looks my, more pinkish but it's clearly a burgundy color and it's very different from this one this is more brownish so this is not really a burgundy so what would I say this is? I would say that this ink is more kind of grey, of uh, brown, sorry. So my brown inks that I may have to compare, I brought here the Mont Blanc Swan Illusion Plume, which is clearly brown, but the kind of shading is similar between the both inks in that in this shade of color. I want to show you also the Rohrer Uncleaner Sepia, which is a sepia ink, which is brown, and you can see that this is really more um, burgundy than this brown. And I have to say that uh, when I'm looking through the camera, these look much more different than I can see with my eyes and I also have a purple ink which is the Great Fountain Deep Purple which may be the a, a kind of similar ink I would say this is a purple greyish ink and maybe this is a burgundy greyish ink if I had to compare this ink with some inks of the previous ink vent calendar as I told you I went for the mulled wine which really has no comparison although we may think this is kind of a burgundy we may think about the triple chocolate because it's brown and you can see it's not the same thing and also the solstice which is maybe my favorite color and this one I would say is the one with this that goes better is a better match between these two inks so do I think they are the same? No may they have the same base? Maybe but this ink has a lot of sheen and uh, shimmer so it's not uh, it's not the same ink but they may have something in common but when we look at them uh, as I told you, looking at the swatch, I could say they may be kind of the same. When we look at the chromatography, the one that... this thing that I do just to, to see how the ink behaves, you can see there is a kind of a more permanent uh, ink because this is where I uh, made the line with the pen, then the ink went up and we can see it's kind of a purple which makes some sense and then it has yellow and brown and just for comparison if we think that the solstice may be the same kind of ink when we look at the solstice chromatography, no this is a grey black ink and this is kind of a purple and brown ink so they are really not the same ink although the base looks quite similar 
Now, let's see the pens that I chose for this review. I chose two pens. I chose the this very old and in old old as uh, in the conservation state. It's in the, it's a very in, in very bad condition. This was a pen that I got for one or two euros in the flea market. I don't remember exactly. And it came with lots of stain and the, this finish almost is inexistent now. And the nib was badly, really badly bent. And I tried to fix it and it, it's not beautiful, but it works now. So I went for the Faber-Castell Faber um, basic with chrome, B-nib, and the graph on Faber-Castell Intuition Terra, which is a beautiful color, beautiful pen, so well made, that has no section, and this one has a fine gold nib, the other one has a broad steel nib. And let's see what they made on paper. So, as usually, as usual, I used three papers. The first one was the moleskin paper, just because it is easy to find and it, it is kind of a cream color. And when you look at the ink on this, uh, on this paper, it really looks like a very dark brown, almost black. You can see the swatch there, there is I would say it looks a little bit more blackish with the broad line instead of the fine. The ink feathers a little bit over the, the fibers of the paper. You can see that. And when we look on the other side, uh, we see little um, bleed through with the fine nib, but we can see some and much more with the broad nib. The next one is the Oxford paper, which is one that I really enjoy because it brings out many times the best of the inks. And this color that I see here is much more similar with the color of the swatch. You can see it here looks like a grayish black and here you can see some small purplish shades, at least I think I can see. There is no uh, bleed through and no feathering. Actually, if you look really, really close, there may be a very, very small feathering, but it's not something that we, you will be able to see with a naked eye. And then we have the navigator 80 grams per square meter cop, uh, per square meter copy paper and the same pens here and there. Uh, I think we can see here a little bit of the color. So if we want to say which one reproduces the color the best is the, the worst is the moleskin paper. Then we go to the copy paper and finally the Oxford paper. It really looks quite dark. It's really usable in um, in a work environment because it really looks kind of black. On the navigator paper here on when I'm where I made the swatch you can see some more uh, bleed through and some here also with the broad nib. About the characteristics of the ink which are better seen here we will not see any, I don't see any shading, uh, any really big shading or any major um, sheen. Although here, because it's very heavily applied, we can see a little bit of kind of a golden sheen, but it's not visible on the other papers. 
Now, we will take a look how it looks on the Rhodia paper. So, we have here the Rhodia.pad and here it was written with the graph on Faber-Castell intuition. So, with this one with the fine gold nib. Here we have the drying times. You can see it is dry uh, above 20 seconds, so not bad. And here you have the behavior with water. As you can see, it's I don't think it's fully readable, but it's still readable. It it leaves here kind of a grayish, bluish line on the paper where the water was on. And it's really something that would be expected because this line that remained here, you can see this horizontal stroke where the water was, you can still see the horizontal stroke, is actually equivalent to this line here. So you still have some readability, if the word exists, of the, your writing with this ink. About the rest of the behavior on the paper. There is, you can see through, but there is no bleed through. Now, let's just write the our old sentence. So, the quick brown fox jumps over the lazy dog. I find this ink to be quite well behaved. Uh, it flows very well. It seems very nice as usually diamine inks are. About the color, as I told you, I kind of like it. Although, in the kind of pens that I will use it, mostly fine nibs, it really looks like black or a very dark brown. And now, let's write with the broad nib. The quick brown fox jumps over the lazy dog. And here you have it. Let me just raise the paper a little bit so you can see it. We have maybe some color variations here with the brown, with the broad nib, but really not that much. It's not really visible, it has no sheen, no visible shading and you can see through but there is no bleed through. So, this was the review of the first ink. I'm not saying if it's good or bad, I think it's well behaved, it works well and it is a kind of ink that I can see myself using in the future. So. This is all for today and I hope to meet you here again tomorrow. Bye!